Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at variables in Kotlin. So we're going to look specifically at the val and var keywords. Variables are one of the fundamental building blocks of computer programs. So let's start looking into what they actually are. Now I'm going to hit you with a load of terminology in this video. And if you're new to programming, you don't need to memorize that terminology or write it down or even necessarily really understand it. I'm just kind of starting to run the terminology past you so that gradually you will come to be familiar with it. So this is the program that we had at the end of the last video. And by the way, Kotlin doesn't care about space. So I've arranged this really carefully in a standard way. And it's really important to follow standard formatting conventions. The IntelliJ editor will help you a lot with that, but don't let your code get messy. This is arranged in precisely this way for very good reasons. So for example, we could put more space there. We could put this print line over against the margin. We could put this bracket somewhere over here. It doesn't matter if we have space there. We could have space here. We could even have new lines there. So now what we've got is that. And if I save that, it's still a valid program. However, it's now unreadable. Now, if you have small formatting problems in your program, what you can do is go to code and reformat code, and it will try to reformat your code in a nice way, but it's not too aggressive. And as you can see, it's not really done a proper job with my code here. There's also a shortcut key for that, which is going to be different on different systems, but it's very well worth memorizing the shortcut key on your system, as you can see in the menu for reformatting your code. Let's just use undo to put this back how it was to start with. So what we've got in the hello world program is we've got the fun keyword, which defines a function. We've named the function main, and that means it's going to be the entry point for our program, the point where the program starts to execute. We've got two round brackets, which are a necessary part of the function definition. And then we've got a block of code, which is defined between two curly brackets. And it's really important that the opening curly bracket should be on the same line as the rest of this function header. There are people who will put it on the next line and that's okay as long as you consistently follow that convention. But I recommend following what I think is the most common convention in Kotlin and putting it on the same line here. We're then calling the print line function. In other words, we're executing a pre-made function and we're passing an argument to that function, some data, which is this string, hello world. In programming, a string means a string of characters so basically some text. And you will gradually get used to these terms and concepts as you go through the course. For now, don't stress about it. So let's take a look at variables in Kotlin. You can think of a variable as basically being like a name that we attach to some entity, like a bit of data or whatever. We'll look at a really simple example. Let's type val, which is a keyword. And now I'm going to make up a name. Let's imagine this refers to the number of cats in some area of town. I can just call this variable cats. That's not a keyword. That's something I've just made up. And we can assign a value to this variable. Let's say equals 123. Val, of course, is short for value. So what this is basically doing is it's making it so that instead of using the value 123 in my code, I can use the name cats instead. And that might not seem like much of a big step forward, but it's actually extremely important in programming in general for a variety of reasons. So we can now print that variable. And when we say print in programming, we don't mean print on a printer, we mean output it on the console. So let's say here, print cats. And in fact, I'll write print line, print ln, because otherwise we're gonna get the number one, two, three immediately followed by hello world, which isn't what I want. Let's run this. I want everything to be on its own line. So you can see now we've got 123 and hello world. So we can use this cats variable as many times as we like in our program, as long as it's in scope. In other words, as long as we're within a bit of the program where it exists, which in this case is going to be between these curly brackets. Now variable names can be as long as you like within reason, and you should follow certain conventions in creating variable names. So typically in Kotlin, we're going to start variable names with a lowercase first letter, 
And if you have multiple words in there, you uppercase the first letter of each subsequent word. So suppose I want to call this number of cats. I can change that like this, number of cats. And I've uppercased O and C to make it more readable. Notice this has turned red because this is now wrong. So I'm going to change that as well if I want my program to still work. You can use numbers in variable names as well. They usually go at the end and they're not allowed to be at the beginning. So I could have number of cats one, for example, and that's a valid variable name, although I would have to change it here as well. Let's leave it at just number of cats for the moment. And we're going to take a look at another type of variable. So this is what we call an immutable variable in Kotlin. If you're coming to Kotlin from another programming language, you may know it as a constant. You can't change it, but the word variable kind of suggests you should be able to change it. In fact, in Kotlin, there is another keyword to define variables that we can change, mutable variables. Let's just arrange this in a way that's a bit nicer. So if I use the var keyword, I can now create a variable that I can later on change. Let's write number of dogs and set that equal to some number. Now we can output number of dogs. Let's write println number of dogs. And if I run that, we're going to see 123 and 56 and hello world all coming out on their own lines because I'm using print line. You'll notice there's some yellow underlining here. And that's the editor warning me that if I'm not going to change number of dogs later, I'd be better off using val. It's better to use val for variables that you're not going to change. However, I do want to change it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I can type number of dogs and change it to something else. And let's output it again. So if I run this, now we're outputting 123 here, then 56 coming from here, then 12 coming from here. So what's happened here? Well, what we're doing in these lines here and here is we're declaring a variable. You have to declare a variable before you're allowed to use it. In other words, you have to say, this is going to be a variable. This is called the assignment operator. And we're actually assigning the value 123 to the variable number of cats, which we declare right here. Then I declare another variable number of dogs and I assign it the value 56 and I'm printing that out as well. Then I change the value of number of dogs to 12 and I output that new value. And finally, I'm outputting the string hello world. So notice when you change the value of a mutable variable declared with var, you don't have to use var again. You only use var once when you declare the variable. You only declare each variable once. There's one last thing that I want to show you in this video, and that is that you can embed, or we say interpolate, the value of a variable within a string. So if you've got text between double quotes, that's literally just some text. You can put what you want in there. It's literally a bit of text that you want to use in your program. I'm going to write here number of dogs colon. And now I want to use the value of this number of dogs variable in this actual string. So I'm going to write a dollar and then number of dogs. And when I run this, you can see it says down here number of dogs 12. So all of this is just the text that I type myself. But then the variable, because I prefixed it with a dollar within my string, is actually getting interpolated. It's getting changed into the value that that variable represents. So if you're completely new to this, this is going to seem very confusing. And the thing to do is not stress about it. Just type it out and get it working yourself. You may also want to try experimenting with it a little bit. Once you've got it working, I'm sure you can think of ways to change this. See if you can change it without breaking the program so that it still works, but does something very slightly different. And another really good thing to do, a really good way to practice, is to see how much you can type of this from memory. And if you are new to programming, probably the answer won't be very much. But see, for example, if you can type a hello world program, as we saw at the start of this video, just from your memory without looking back at this code, see how far you get and you'll find the mistakes that you make are very enlightening because they show you what bits you still have to remember. The best way to memorize this stuff though is not to try to consciously memorize it, but just practice typing it out and your fingers will somehow 
pick up the memory of what to do bit by bit. That's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.